Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to continue our discussion about interactivity in Sugarcube 2.36 by discussing the checkbox, list box, and number box macros. So we've previously seen how we can begin to add additional interactivity within passages by working with the link macro and its sister macros, link prepend, link replace, and link append. We can continue that trend of working with macros within Sugar to add even more interactivity by working with three of the macros I'm going to cover in this video. And they are checkbox, list box, and number box. And each of them works slightly different. So let's go ahead and begin with checkbox. So the checkbox macro allows us to choose between binary options. We are interested in one thing or another thing. When the box is checked, it chooses one, and when the box is unchecked, it chooses the other. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So this question asks, do you want pizza? And then notice the use of the checkbox macro right here. Notice as a trend that we've seen across a number of macros now, when we're working with potentially read or input, we have the variable within quotation marks right here, pizza within quotation marks. Then I have one, and then a space, and then two. One will be the default, two will be, if it is checked, what the value will be. And then notice down here, I'm using the link replace macro, so then we can immediately see the value. So let's go ahead and play this so we can look at how the checkbox macro works. So I'm going to go ahead and play from here. And notice this is, do you want pizza? Now, I'm not going to click on this checkbox right here, just so we can see something pretty important. Notice it says, see value, and immediately you see the value is one. Now remember, when we worked with the text box macro in the same way, it worked in the same format. And in fact, we will see this across a number of different macros within Sugarcube. When we immediately use them with a variable, it sets whatever that default value was. In this example, the default value was 1, which means immediately that's what the value was set to. And this is incredibly useful, because there might be situations where a reader does not interact with the additional interactive macros we add. In that case, we always want some type of default value to fall back on. This allows us to immediately set a default, and then if they interact with it, we can get a different value. So let's go ahead and see that in action. So we started with the default value of 1, and then if I replay it and check it this time, we will then move to the value of 2. So that's the checkbox macro. We can choose between two values. Now, one of the interesting things about the checkbox macro is we could use a bunch of them together. So if we wanted to choose between binary options 1 and 2, true and false, or other things like that, we could provide multiple ones within the same passage and then have a reader choose between them. Now, for each option, they would be choosing between those two different checkboxes. Now, that word option is important because we're about to move into the second macro I want to cover, list box. So for checkbox, we write into the macro itself one thing or another thing, one or two, true or false, something like that. And again, we need to choose one or the other, and it will, of course, start with the default value. So the list box macro works in a similar way, except instead of one or other, so true or false, of a case of two different things, the list box macro allows us to provide many different things, but we have to choose one of them. And the list box macro works with another macro called option. Again, why I used that term previously. So let's go ahead and look at this example. It says, what do you want for dinner? And again, notice the double quotation marks around the variable. And then we see option, option. So there are two option macros here inside the list box macro. And again, as we just saw with the checkbox macro, the first one will be the default value, and then any interactions will then change that value once they happen. And I've also, again, used the link replace macro so we can see the immediate value. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Let's go ahead and change a start story from here to example two. And say, what do you want for dinner? Notice this says tacos, see choice. Again, set immediately default value. Let's go ahead and play this again. And then notice it lists various things. So the list box macro, as opposed, to, as opposed to the check box macro, provides us multiple options. And we define each of those options using the option macro inside the list box macro. And I can choose pizza if I want this time, see choice, pizza. So for either case, remember that it immediately sets a default value, again, just in case a reader does not interact with it. So we've seen 
we've now seen checkbox macro choose one thing or another. We've seen list box macro choose one of a set. Let's look at number box macro. So as opposed to what we've now seen working with collections or working with sets of data for checkbox one thing or another thing, for list box one of a set of things, for number box, it allows us to enter a number in a box. It's somewhat of a straightforward named macro. So let's go ahead and look at this and then we'll wrap all this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the story from over here, but pull up this code. So this is how many pizzas do you want? And notice number box again, notice in double quotation, point, uh, double quotation marks, we see the name of the variable right here. And again, we see its default value. And as we'll see here in just a second, it has a default value that it will immediately choose. So notice as opposed to the check box or list box, the number box is set up for numbers. We can go up and we can go down corresponding numbers. Now it started with 10, we see the choice of 10, and if we replay, we can adjust this number correspondingly and notice it will immediately change that value. So let's review what I've talked about in this video. We have a check box that allows us to choose between up to two things, one thing or another thing, and then when the reader checks that box, they will be choosing between them. We have a list box, which allows us to set a larger number of options of things, but a still reader must choose one of them. And then we see a number box, which allows a reader to enter numbers within a box, choosing only numerical values up and down of whole numbers that we've seen so far. So check box, one thing or another thing, list box, one thing of a larger set of things, and number box, entering a number and adjusting its value up and down, allowing a reader to additionally add interactivity through three new macros I've covered in this video for SugarCube 2.36 as part of Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.